Which is the best 360 camera? It's one of the most common questions I get, but it's also um, not so easy to answer it. There's no single straightforward answer to it. Um, and in this video, I'm not going to give you the answer because there isn't a single one, but rather I'm going to give you the tool that will let you find the answer for yourself. So when someone asks which is the best 360 camera, uh, there's no uh, single answer to that um, for at least a couple of reasons. First, you need to know what is the, the ultimate reason or purpose for this 360 camera because everyone's going to use the camera in a different way. I mean, are you going to use it to shoot uh, real estate virtual tours? Are you going to take uh, 360 photos of virtual tours? Are you going to um, shoot a, a movie with it, a narrative? Um, are you going to shoot at, uh, an event? The way you plan to use a 360 camera will provide the context for uh, which features are most important to your particular needs. Now, the other reason why there's no single answer to the question of which is the best 360 camera is that uh, the, everyone has their own individual shooting styles and preferences and experiences. Uh, so, you know, for example, let's say my friend uh, Ben Claremont from Life in 360, uh, he loves to shoot uh, tiny planet photos and videos. He's very well known for that. Um, and he wants uh, to use cameras that have built-in image stabilization. Now my other friend Sarah Redol from Immersive Shooter, she also values stabilization of course, but she relies on a gimbal for that. So for her, uh, built-in image stabilization is not so critical. So if you ask them whether built-in image stabilization is important, they'll give you two uh, different answers. And uh, that's you know pretty much to be expected. Everyone has their own individual shooting styles. So because everyone has their own individual shooting styles um, and everyone has their own individual needs, uh, then there's, it's really difficult to provide one single answer for everyone. Uh, there's no such thing. So my solution is to uh, compare 360 cameras using objective factual data. So rather than giving you, you know, a single answer and presenting it as the definitive answer, I'd rather give you the tools for finding the answer to that question yourself. Um, so I've created a 360 camera comparison page where I'm uh, where I've compared 23 360 cameras um, from ranging from you know under a hundred dollars up to you know uh, like seven thousand um, dollars it's a wide, besides these this uh, wide array of uh, 360 cameras you'll also be able to compare actual samples from each of these cameras sample photos and sample videos and for the first time you're going to be able to compare these samples side by side so for example if you want to know um, which is the which is better video quality is it the 2016 gear 360 or the 2017 gear 360 you'll be able to compare samples sample videos from both of them side by side you can also do that for photos so for example theta s or theta v which takes a, which takes better photos you'll be able to use this tool to compare photos side by side from these 360 cameras so there are several advantages to using actual sample photos and videos from these 360 cameras first of all the data is objective uh, so regardless of you know like the marketing for um, a particular camera or uh, even like my own bias for example um, you can look at the actual data and you can actually look at the actual sample photos and videos and compare them um, so you know it doesn't matter um, if you believe that I'm uh, biased or not, you're looking at an actual sample photo or video from a 360 camera. And if I say a particular camera is, um, you know, has better dynamic range or this one has 
a uh, small purple, purple fringing. You can see for yourself if that's true or not. You don't have to take my word for it. Well, image quality is only one factor. Now, besides uh, comparing sample photos and videos, we also want to know about the workflow for these 360 cameras. What is it like to actually use these 360 cameras on a day-to-day -day basis? What is the process that's required to take uh, to shoot all the way from shooting up to sharing these photos or videos? Um, so, there are many uh, reviewers out there, and there are different types of reviews. And some of them, they're based only on, um, you know, a spec sheet. You know, they're looking at a spec sheet and uh, looking at the official samples, of photos, and videos, and pronouncing a judgment uh, of of their evaluation, a so-called review of um, uh, what the camera is like, based only on the spec sheet. For me, that doesn't really count as a review. Um, and you know, they're also uh, reviewers out there who you know are they got a sample from the manufacturer and they're you know testing the camera in an office you know just trying it one a couple of times then they make a review based on that I I don't really like that either uh, I don't think that's sufficient information uh, the third level of review I would say is one where um, you're able to actually use the 360 camera out there in the field shooting with it for a whole day so that you can see what it's really like to try it out and use it um, in, out there in the field um, and then a fourth level of review I would say is if you're you're using the 360 camera on a day-to-day -day basis you know for several weeks so that you really get to know it um, and you find out all its quirks and um, as well as its uh, you know hidden strengths now I like to when I do a review I like to um, have at least the level 3 if not level 4 level of experience and that's why my uh, reviews tend to be uh, known for being hands-on and very in-depth so you'll find a link to my hands-on reviews for these 360 cameras in a convenient list that not only um, has links to these hands-on reviews but also shows you the key specifications and features. Uh, so you'll see the, the like basic specs such as their photo resolution, video resolution, um, key specifications and compatibility. And this list is also sortable so for example if you wanted to sort it based on cost from lowest to highest or alphabetical list uh, based on the name of the camera you can do that you can also search so if you wanted to search for let's say you know insta 360 pro you could simply type that in the search box it'll bring it up third you can also apply a filter to this chart so for example if you wanted to know uh, which 360 cameras are compatible with mac then you can type that in the search box a Mac and it will show you uh, just those 360 cameras that have uh, Mac compatibility and you can even combine different filters for example if you want to know um, 360 cameras that are compatible with, com compatible with Android and are waterproof you can type let's say Android uh, waterproof or Android water and it's going to show you just those 360 cameras that are uh, that have Android compatible and compatibility and are waterproof. Now, to help you make the most of this uh, 360 camera comparison page, uh, I wanted to talk to you more about the scene that I chose and how you can use it to evaluate different characteristics such as sharpness, um, stitching quality, chromatic aberration. Um, and other characteristics. So let me tell you about the sample photos and videos and how can how you can make the most use of them. I want to use something that doesn't change um, and so I decided to use this wall um, and so I, I wanted to highlight a few things about this wall. And first of all unlike a chart this is not gonna change um, not because of the weather not because of the sun it's pretty much gonna be like that forever uh, so that can provides a consistent target uh, not only that but um, it 
this wall has like two different textures. Um, this part is pretty rough and you, these, it has these speckles on them. And this provides like an easy target uh, for uh, comparing macro contrast. Um, and um, you, the, on the other hand, you have this other surface, which is which kind of looks smooth, but it's actually textured. So this one is good for smaller details. One limitation of this test is because it's outdoors, then the lighting can change. And I've tried to make the lighting as consistent as possible. I t in some cases, I took several samples and posted them all. Uh, to make it easier to compare uh, the different samples from different dates. Uh, in this test, you'll also see like, uh, like there are trees there um, on the side, um, right near the stitch line. And there's a reason for that. It's the tree branches, they often reveal purple fringing, and, and purple fringing tends to occur on the stitch line. That's why I positioned position the camera that way. Um, you'll also see um, uh, in, for videos, I tested the uh, stitching by walking back and forth along the stitch line. You'll also see the uh, dynamic range. Uh, one part of the scene is uh, brightly lit and another part of the scene is uh, under shade. So you can see the highlight and shadow range in a, in a realistic and practical setting, which is like, you know, outdoors, daytime, and in uh, uh, conditions that are close to sunny 16. You'll also be able to see uh, flare resistance uh, because the sun will be uh, shining um, onto the lens. So those are some of the characteristics that you can test. So as you can see, this 360 camera comparison is going to be very useful for your research. In fact, I encourage you to use this tool to, you know, fact check or double check any claims by me or by any other reviewer. So if they say, if they make a, an assertion or if I make an assertion, um, you know, use the chart, uh, use the comparison page uh, to double check if it's true or not. And if it's not, call us out on it. You, know, I, you, should, you really should do that. Uh, this will keep the, um, you know, keep reviewers honest. That includes me, of course. And, you know, it will benefit the industry in general. And it's only the beginning. Uh, so far, I only have, quote, only have 23 uh, cameras. Um, and that's the most comprehensive one as far as I know in terms of like hands-on testing. Uh, but I do plan to add even more 360 cameras in the future. Um, going forward, as I acquire um, new 360 cameras, expect to find them in the database. So uh, as you can guess, it took a lot of time effort and money to put this chart together. Um, I started working on this chart way back in May um, and it's only in, now in no November that I've at last been able to uh, publish it. Um, even though it took me a lot of time and effort to put this uh, this chart together, I'm providing it for free. Um, that you can use it. Um, you know, it's not behind a paywall or anything like that. Um, and there's no limit to the amount of times you can use it. Uh, but I do need your help. Um, and I need them in two ways. First is, uh, please share this tool. Uh, provide a link to uh, this tool or to 360 Rumors so that more people can discover it and more people can um, benefit from it. Second, um, if you're going to buy a 360 camera or accessory, uh, please consider using my affiliate links uh, because uh, these 360 cameras, I, most of them I had to buy by myself. And, uh, you know, so the, the way I'm able to buy them is through these affiliate links. When you use them, I get a small commission at no additional cost to you so that I can use those funds to buy more 360 cameras and add them to this. Uh, comparison page. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. For more information on 360 cameras and accessories, go to 360rumors.com, the home of the ultimate 360 camera comparison. So uh, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.